Hello everyone, this is Hadrian. And I'm Mal. Thank you for watching. Let's play some Master of Orion in our Extreme Bromance series. We got off to a pretty good start, didn't we? I think so. I mean, I, I, I'm optimistic, cautiously, I guess, optimistic. Um, I'm a little bit worried about the Siliquoid, like, being able to be in striking distance of biting your face off. But <laughs> you do have, you know, minus 20% to ship construction. You have more right. command points. I mean, if anybody was going to get early aggression, you're playing the right race for it. So Agreed. I guess from that standpoint, we're okay. Yep. Yeah, but just by virtue of playing the Terran Connet is what, is what he's talking about, folks. For those of you who might be newer to Master of Orion, uh, the Terran Connet, as, as he mentioned rightly, I mean, the human races, particularly the Terrans, if you want to be militaristic or be able to defend yourself in the beginning of the game as a newer player, learning the ropes, especially if you're the kind of person who stubbornly, like us, uh, insists on playing at the higher difficulty <laughs> settings when possible, um, it's, it's a good race to play as because of those bonuses that he just mentioned. And of course, the the standard humans as well, not just the Terrans. The standard humans are good, yeah. In single player, they're really good because charismatic is is quite powerful. However, we're gonna be testing out whether or not it's viable for multiplayer in this. Let's see. Let's see if I can get her to share charts. Um, it's interesting with the Marchand too. Part of the changes in Phase Five is that it's supposed to be even harder to get them to agree to anything. So let's see <laughs> what happens when she's dealing with humans. Gonna be super catty. Well, she she accepted the uh, share uh, charts with no strings attached. Probably because she wants to I see can... your territory so she can invade you. Oh, I well, have just met the possibly. Cylon. Really? Okay. Yes. Interesting. They actually popped up in the Camorium system, so they're pretty close to me too. So the Cylon homeworld if you go all right, if you go all the way west of Galactic Center and then just start going counterclockwise around the edge of the map, yep. Mentar is the first yellow star that you hit. And then there's another yellow star a little bit northeast of that. I uh, see it. That is Tehan. Um, so Mentar is the one on the far rim. Um, so the Cylon, from a sci-fi perspective, are a far rim race. Actually, it looks like all of us are, with, with the exception of you. But um, And then Tehan, that other yellow star nearby, is, is also so then, So then that means that the Mechlar are somewhere between them at the bottom. Yep. Between them and the Martian. Yep, so we've actually well, almost encountered everyone. That was quick. Yeah, it's not it's not ideal. What would have been perfect is if the Cylon had been where the Siliquid are, but we'll take it. It's not, it's not bad. It's yeah. not bad. <laughs> My colony ship is one turn away from being done on Alpha City. I'm going to have them hightail it to Sabaki. There is a uh, swamp world with gems on it, no less. And gems, for those of you who are not aware, give you a credit bonus. So that'll make my early colonies a bit more lucrative. My early empire, rather, more lucrative. All right. Colony ship. I'm, I'm eight turns from Xeno Relations. Are you working on that tech yet? I don't think so i think you're ahead of me on tech this time let's let's have a look or at least in that particular branch i don't know why i was looking at diplomacy just now okay view technology i am two turns away from finishing government and i, I okay. should have known i could just look at that from the top of my screen but for whatever reason i went to the <laughs> i went to the tech screen to look at it but yeah i'm, I'm almost there and then i can start all right with... that'll be good too because then we can get early spy centers and all of our agreements that that'll that'll be nice yep i'm gonna go ahead and just keep cranking out colony ships at alpha seti too Yeah, since so far, though, in Phase 5, the the uh, the AIs can get wonky and just start attacking. But yeah, if I can keep positive relations with her, then I won't invest in too much military infrastructure. Yeah. Which is risky. Which is risky. Yeah. So, actually, before I commit to this for this turn, um, I do need to research Zeno relations, right? Because you can only share technologies that are choice-related, correct? Correct. All right. So, yeah, I'm going to go for that first. I don't know why I had to check myself on that, but there you go. Galactic hey, good Network. for you. The human Republic has Get that and then... I'm still not this... a fan of the uh, subtitles on GNN. I prefer just to listen to the voices. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, it doesn't need that. What I'm really not a fan of, I, I guess I should be more specific. You can't turn them off. We experimented right. with it before, and, and there's no way to make them go away. So that that's something that hopefully will be in the next 
next patch. My colony ship is five turns away now from Sabaki. Oh, that was nice. Grabbed a uh, frigate from doing some research. Nice. Or not research, but by getting an anomaly. That getting was anomaly, nice. Yeah. So far, I think I think you've snagged the anomalies. There was the one that you first got where you got that really nice um, boon right away was, was between Alpha Seti and Rabat, and I haven't seen any other so far, so hopefully I'll find one before anyone else gets to it. They tend to pop up kind of randomly right near your systems in like the beginning of the game, and they don't always show up immediately. Yeah. Oh, nice. And sometimes they're worthwhile, and sometimes they're not. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like, yeah. Sometimes they're just little credit bonuses when you when you're already doing okay with money, uh, which is not a bad thing necessarily. But I mean, it's pales in comparison to getting like a technology or a ship. Um, right. So I got a I got a destroyer one time in the early game, and I had already <laughs> upgraded my destroyer, so it was the upgraded one, and I was like, "Oh my goodness, I'm so happy!" <laughs> yeah, exactly. In that exact pitch voice. Um, so Sanomata Prime, Sanomata, which you might be able to see the name of the system, even though you can't see what I just discovered just yet, is an 11 pop arid abundant planet north of Sabaki. So, if I can lock down Sabaki, I actually I'm I'm very happy with the colonies I have access to in my little wing here as long as i can defend I'm, this i'm okay with what i've gotten so far it hasn't been great um i mean i have gotten some error i mean i have an arid world with artifacts which is pretty nice but nothing nothing like you know unbelievable i mean it's, yeah. it's good not great So the other planet in Sonobita is an 11 pop ocean abundant world with gold. So I may be close to the uh, to the silicoid, but the game has rewarded me with some pretty nice planets. Ooh, on another note though, they have a fleet. Actually, three frigates. Two or four frigates and two destroyers heading towards my little two-ship fleet. Um, so I could be in trouble here if they decide to fight me. So The Cylons do? Yeah. No, not the Cylons. The uh, the Siliquid. So do you think I should move these uh, destroyers away from the warp point so they don't see that as a provocation? I would move them back. You haven't settled there, right? Yeah? No, not yet. But I've my colony ship, before this, their fleet arrives, actually, um, I'm just going to have these guys chilling at a planet. So they don't get blown yeah. out. Yeah, don't block the wormhole or don't block the warp point. They they will kill them. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna avoid that. <laughs> I don't want that to happen. All right, and I am gonna colonize Sabaki Prime right now. Up. They're telling me not to colonize near him, but uh, I'm gonna say no. <laughs> yeah, I would say screw them. Yeah, screw yeah. you. And if anyone's wondering, well, why 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 do that and potentially provoke them? Because we had done a um, we had done a test run with slightly different setup, and but we kept the silicoid. They were in the lineup as well, and I actually said, "Yeah, no problem. I I won't colonize near you." And then they came and tried to destroy both of us. Like I don't know what was it? Maybe twenty turns later. So it yeah, didn't, it didn't yeah. help. It didn't help us at all to be like, "Yeah, let's be nice guys." It didn't. Yeah, that didn't help. Yeah, as we've mentioned, and we can discuss this again because I think it's 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 one of the most fruitful discussions that you can have of early access five right now. One of the most important ones. You know, the extreme. Uh, Difficulty setting is extreme. It's hard, but it's not necessarily hard in the way you want it to to be. Like it's not challenging in terms of like, oh, okay, the AI is is more robust in its decision making, and it and it builds up a powerful fleet, but doesn't, uh, but but then kind of speaks softly in certain situations until you piss it off. No, it's just going to charge you. It's just going to make your life really difficult in ways that aren't necessarily. I, I, I think. I think the devs did the right thing in terms of increasing the difficulty. There were right. complaints about it. What's kind of funny though is that people that complain about the difficulty of the game, I think weren't playing on very hard. I don't I don't think they were, quite frankly. Some of them might have been. Um, but just like I pick up little things, uh, you know, it's so tough enough and I'm like looking at it and I'm like, well, and plus you had a lot of control about how tough it was based on the size of the galaxy and how many opponents you chose and which opponents. So you could make it pretty damn tough as it is in phase four. Now in phase five, even more so, with the greater difficulty level and the fact that they're super aggressive. The, my biggest issue with it is that, and you and I have talked about this, is I don't like feeling like I'm being cheated. Like, I know that, 
in this extreme difficulty that the AIs are getting all kinds of bonuses uh, to their production and everything else. And, and, you know, to some degree, you kind of have to do that as a developer. And I get that. Um, but I just, like you, want it to be smarter. I want it to make smarter decisions. And I want it to stick to who, it, who they are. Like, if you're the Barathi and your whole thing is honor and everything else, then you shouldn't be, like, coming in right away and backstabbing somebody. Right. That's just not something they should do. And yet, they will. Right. Um, so, and I've given that feedback extensively to the devs and I, and I hope that they change that. I'm, I'm fine with, again, I'm fine with it them being aggressive, but have the aggressiveness make sense. And I think what you were saying, Hadrian, is essentially what they've created is a blunt object. Right. And they just, they go around trying to whack you with it because you set the difficulty to extreme. So there's, there's some tweaking to be done, but they're heading in the right direction. Okay. The silicoid have flown their fleet to Sabaki Prime, which is my colony, and it's also where my ships are hanging out, uh, but they haven't attacked. Yet, but they probably will. Okay, well, I'm going to fly my ships I would, away. <laughs> yeah, I would fly the ships away. If you lose the colony, that's unfortunate, but then you'll have to militarize um, name or whatever that is. Yeah. And actually, while you were talking about the difficulty setting, I went ahead. I've got a destroyer building at Sabaki. Uh, it's going to take 22 turns because, of course, I only have the one pop and food. But what I'm hoping for is that as the turn count goes down on its remaining production, its cost, of course, will also go down to finish production. So I can just outright buy it and have a little bit of an extra extra defensive ability, assuming my other um, fleet survives. They're not. They have a destroy another destroyer. They're flying in to join their fleet at Sabaki Prime. So that's when they might attack. It's, I feel like they did something similar with you. Like they they had a fleet that wasn't necessarily fully hostile yet, but they waited until they could consolidate some forces a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, that's exactly then, what they did with me. And then they did something a little bit meaner. This is GNN. Hey, a gigantic squid has been discovered lurking a somewhere in the galaxy. Space creature has been discovered. All civilian craft are directed to maintain a safe distance <laughs> from this dangerous creature. These voice actors crack me up. Some of them are just really good. Well, I have a, a system that's like a dead end with no other warp points in. That's four worlds. And so far, three of them... Well, none of them are bad, let me put it that way. That's kind of nice. They still haven't attacked me. They're just orbiting. They're just hanging out. Which I find interesting. I'm going to go ahead and scrap my scout. One of them anyway. Actually, yeah, the only one, because the other one got destroyed, um, I think, first episode, when I was flying it to the colon the home system of the <laughs> of the uh, silicoid. And they were like, you can't be here, and they killed it. You're not allowed here. Ooh, small Gaia Abundant Gold. That, that's pretty nice. All right, I'm going to have my new destroyer pop up on Sabaki Prime now because I just bought it as I planned. Are they there? They're, yeah, they're still there. They're just they're sitting there with that fleet. It's let's see, it's a three destroyer, four forget fleet, and they're, hmm. they're they're just they're just hanging out. Just saying hello with their massive, overpowering fleet. All right, I was able to fly the other destroyer away. So I have absolutely crap chances against their fleet still, but... All right, good. My other colony ship has arrived. Let me keep... I'm going to keep building military ships here. Matter of fact, I'll just keep building destroyers. Same strategy, just building up income until I can buy the ship outright. Colony ship has arrived at Nam Prime, so I'm going to have my second colony on Nam. 
Always, I feel like I'm talking about Vietnam every time I'm talking about this freaking system. It's awkward. <laughs> How are things going on your side? Um, it's going okay. I've pretty much scouted out the whole area. Matter of fact, let me trade charts with you. Okay. By the way, I'm 11 turns away from Zenner Relations. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, you've, you've done a lot. All right, cool. Which, actually, I picked up electronic computer. Um, just from a, you know, random... Anomaly, so I'll, I'll, I don't, is that one I can trade? I'm trying to remember. I think it is. Uh, it is. So, electronics, let's just ignore that, because we don't really need deep scanner right now. Right. I would say that we just ignore electronics right now, because I can hand you electronic computer for the plus 25 to hit. Excellent. And then we can just work on, probably what, advanced magnetism would be next, I guess? Probably so, yeah. Yeah. I think so. So we can get um, fields and ECM jammers. Yep. I like to go for advanced fusion pretty quick, too, uh, just so I have that uh, extra jump drive speed early as possible. Well, do you want to go for... You want to do advanced fusion and then advanced magnetism? Yeah, that's probably what I would do. All right. I'll I'm, set up I'm, Like that I way. said, I'm, I'm 10 turns away from, from Zener Relations, uh, so not really capable of making any research decisions for the immediate future yeah this this silicoid fleet is just letting me build additional combat ships at sabaki prime slowly but surely which is funny because eventually i'll get to a point where i can rival them somewhat well if they're gonna let you do it right right like right Great. now that, i don't know what their thinking is but it's 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 slightly amusing Nam is eventually going to be a powerhouse system once I can get these uh, uh, barren planets colonized and built up. It'll take a while for them to grow, but once they're done growing, oh my god! And it's right in the heart of all my territory. So, if I can survive the Silicoids initial war overtures, whatever the hell they're doing right now, all right next turn, then you'll be in good shape. I'll be in good shape, and next turn I'm going to be able to build the second destroyer. Check this out. Given my income, since we boosted our taxes, both of us in the beginning of the game, uh, this destroyer would normally be 17 turns off next turn, but I'm going to be able to buy it outright. Um, so Because you have ship cost reduction? Yep. It's so beautiful. Oh, wait, no, can't do it just yet. So one more turn. All right, I am officially militarizing Nam. Okay, I am officially militarizing both Vox and whatever it's called, Asculus or something like that. Matter of fact, I'm six turns away from having that closed off at the bottom. And I'm going to put some more ships at the wormhole as I can. <laughs> because you can. <laughs> no, as soon as I can. Oh, okay, gotcha. But yeah, because I can also. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> In fact, I'm sending a scout through the wormhole because I'm going to go to see if I can't get um, it. No, I can't get through. They've got it blocked off. All right, I'll go the other way then. <laughs> no choice. So uh, Fyrus is um, is the Mershon's home system, correct? It is. All right, how are my command points looking? I've got eight out of... Yeah, I'm just going to keep building destroyers at this uh, at this world <laughs> until they catch on and realize we probably shouldn't let them keep doing that. I feel like the silicoid are, are being a little bit less... Uh, aggressive toward me than they were in our little test run. Oh, I can't believe you just said that. No. Jinx. I know. I know. I know. Jinx. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I should just shut my mouth. <laughs> I should have learned this lesson already through a million campaigns, but 
Oh, found the mech wire. Yeah, they do have another destroyer sitting at the warp point uh, on the uh, heading towards Sabaki. So, I mean, to our earlier point, joking aside and jinxes aside, they seem to be doing what they did before, which is not attacking until they have their desired fleet strength. They're just waiting, you think? Yeah. They're, they're, they're doing exactly what they did before, I would imagine. And they're not going to actually start being aggressive until they hit some threshold that is invisible to me. Well, Chrismatic seems to be working. I just got a deal with the Mechlar on upon meeting them, which is wow. kind of unheard of. That's so I've crazy. actually got yeah. So I've got I'm like all the way positive with them right now. Good. Where are the Mechlar? So can you send me your charts? I I will I'll send you the charts right now. Only five seconds left on the turn, though. Be careful. <laughs> oh, didn't make it. Didn't make it. I'll send it to you now, though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wasn't fast enough. I wasn't fast enough. Okay, interesting. They're actually withdrawing their fleet from Sabaki Prime. And it, it is heading back towards their territory. That's interesting. They might be getting some pressure. I would love that if they were. Did you mention that you found Orion and then I just completely spaced? I don't think I mentioned it, but yes. <laughs> You jerk. All right, so yeah, Orion is, for those of you wondering, it's right there to the right of the uh, Galactic Center, to the east. So it looks like we've, with the exception of the bottom three stars there, we've fully explored. Yeah, we've got the whole map, so that's yeah. good in terms of visibility, right? Yeah, within the second episode, too, not bad. That's one of the reasons we wanted to go with this medium galaxy size. It just makes understanding what's going on a lot more manageable from a play and a... Uh, Let's play perspective. Oh crap! So oh just war. no! Damn it! I knew that was going to happen. But interestingly, but at, least, at least you're semi-prepared for it. Yeah, they have a destroyer sitting in orbit of the of the planet where I have my uh, warship sitting. So guess what? I'm going to kill it right now because it's just a destroyer versus my three destroyers and a frigate. Damn it, it was able to retreat. I have two turns until Zener Relations is done, by the way. Okay. Yeah, they're making very interesting moves, though, because they have that destroyer, which I just almost killed, um, and it's it retreated, and it's now sitting at the warp point. They have another destroyer, just a single destroyer, inbound, and they've got their main attack fleet actually withdrawing from the system. It's it's heading the other way, so it's going to be one, two, three, four, five turns before they can turn around and get it back. And in the meantime, the ships they're sending are just single ship fleets. So I'm, I'll be able to whittle them down a little bit, um, at least slow them down that way. Um, I wish that we could do, um, like, you know coordinated attacks but i mean we can to an extent we just can't yeah just just not yet directly go into the same fight together yeah hope they add that that would be great i know i'd be so happy okay i've got to do some queuing here at my uh first colony on nom three because I can, I finally have a second population here. I'm gonna finish off that ship. Goodbye. All right, so that's done. I am four you turns finished, away. What now? You finished Xenotech or still? Oh, I am one turn away, and I'm four turns okay. away from another colony ship at Alpha Seti, so that's that'll be helpful. This is a decent-ish stopping point for you? Welcome yeah. Oh, wait, no, just kidding. Galactic hey, another network. space monster. 
Space Bob Eel. Yep. <laughs> or Space Eel Bob, depending on how you want to look at it. Oh, what's he guarding? Either way. Don't know. Wow, that's two nice arid worlds, actually. The medium, arid, rich with gems on it. That's Which system is this? Pretty nice. It's uh, Arcturus. Arcturus looking at it. Okay. Oh, yeah, I can see it. Arcturus yeah. Prime and Arcturus 2. And he's in there? Yeah, he's in there. Okay, interesting. Yeah, it's going to be a while before we can think seriously. You're actually going to have more access to that uh, from a colony standpoint. But, uh, but yeah, I think I'm ready to cut this one here if you are. Okay. Cool. Well, thanks very much for watching, folks. If you enjoyed, don't forget to f don't forget that Mal and I both have a series going so you can see the campaign from both sides. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along as well if you're not already. We're uploading new episodes in Extreme Bromance on both channels every day at 9 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, which is GMT minus four for those of you not in the States. And comments are always welcome. Let us know what you think. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. He's Hadrian. I'm Mal, and we will see you later.